Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, it's indeed a great honor for me to be here today and give this talk, and it's even a greater honor to be the first uh, on the list for today. Um, I'm going to talk about dermal rejuvenation and volumetric therapy utilizing autologous platelet-rich plasma. Um, in general, um, platelets are not our best friends intravascularly because they cause thrombi and they cause problems. So um, I'm going to talk today about the other aspect of platelets. Um, they attract stem cells and they release growth factors. So it just shows you how amazing the body is uh, and uh, we can utilize uh, the same uh, um, cell type to do something else uh, of benefit to the patient. Um, I must just first declare that um, the technique I'm going to describe today was not invented by me solely. Uh, my big friend, Dr. Kibota, is a plastic surgeon in Tokyo, Japan, uh, was instrumental in uh, motivating me to, to um, adopt this technique. But uh, prior to beginning of last year, uh, Dr. Victor Garcia uh, from Barcelona in Spain has been practicing injection of platelet-rich plasma in the skin, uh, but he utilizes a mesotherapy technique. And uh, one of my best friends, Dr. Uh, Professor Peter Bering, is well known in Europe uh, from Aarhus in Denmark, um, have actually been injecting platelet-rich plasma uh, into lips of patients, and this is instead of injecting a filler or uh, of a dermal, of, of um, um, animal origin or, or um, synthetic um, origin. So exactly what is platelet-rich plasma? There are many definitions, uh, but autologous means it's the body's own. So I'm using the patient's own body. I'm, I'm taking blood from the patient. It's not from a donor or from somebody else. And uh, it's a concentration of human platelets in a very small volume of plasma, and it's normally about a million of these platelets per cubic uh, millimeter, or about two to six times the native concentration of whole blood, and at a pH of about 6.5 to 6.7. In the literature, it's also referred to as autologous platelet gel, plasma-rich growth factors, or autologous platelet concentrate. But most importantly, platelet-rich plasma is a concentration of the seven fundamental protein growth factors that have been proven uh, to be actively secreted by platelets to initiate wound healing. So we are going to talk about the fact that platelets are instrumental in wound healing and the, it's the exaggerated wound healing process that gives us the rejuvenation. It also includes three proteins in the blood known to act as cell adhesion molecules like fibrin, fibronectin and vitronectin. But if we look at the physiology of, um, of uh, platelet-rich plasma, um, there are five main steps. So we inject it intradermally or just below the dermis, um, this uh, cellular-rich plasma, and it acts then as a biological scaffold because when we're injecting a filler, we are creating an environment where there's a scaffold and uh, we hope that there will be new blood vessels growing into it and attracting fibroblasts. But many fillers out there are not doing that. There may be a few out there that we are aware that stimulate some fibroblast reaction but not really stem cell reaction. So once we've uh, injected the, the plasma and added a calcium chloride um, coagulant to it, it will form like a, a fiber network. So it's like a scaffold. And the scaffold then traps, has got thrombocytes trapped in there and white cells. And then these thrombocytes are now activated and they'll start releasing um, growth factors and they'll also chemo trap fibroblasts and stem cells to the area. And then we get stem cell proliferation and differentiation. So it's a natural process that we are just stimulating. So how are platelets activated? There are a number of ways of activation of platelets. Um, if you cut yourself or there's an injury, then the exposed endothelial collagen will activate the platelets. Arachidonic and th acid and thromboxane uh, A2, so inflammation will activate it, ADP, thrombin, adrenaline, and then calcium chloride. Um, so if we just look at this, uh, the key mediators in platelet adhesion, activation, aggregation, it's a complex process. But what we're interested in is in some injury or needle, needle uh, uh, injections is, it, is an injury. And eventually we want the thrombus, but we don't want a thrombus full of uh, red blood cells. So we, we want to separate the red blood cells. And we, we want thrombus extravascular, not intravascular. So it's a complex uh, cascade, but in the end we know that uh, once we have adhesion and activation of the platelets and aggregation, they start releasing these growth factors. And when you get aggregation, just uh, on the bottom right-hand side, you can see compared to platelets that are um, dormant, 
um, and uh, platelets who are activated with a fibrin, just to give you some idea that you have some sort of a scaffold there, and these platelets are then trapped, so they can't just wander away and start migrating. But just to look at the, in the healing cascade, once the platelets are activated, they start releasing a number of growth factors. So first you get platelet-derived growth factors, and they're in, uh, responsible for a synthesis of extracellular matrix. The transforming growth factors stimulate DNA synthesis, and eventually you get a synthesis of collagen. Uh, the insulin-like growth factors will stimulate proliferation of osteoblasts, and there the dentists have been using this since the 90s. When they do implants, when they do sinus lifts, they combine platelet-rich plasma with uh, artificial bone or with uh, some bone fragments from the patient, and they get uh, osteoblast reaction and uh, mineralization of bone much faster than without uh, platelet-rich plasma. The epidermal growth factor to us, uh, to me, is very important because it does help uh, proliferation of epidermal cells, and that's what you and I can see with our naked eye. We can't really see what's going on in the dermis, but we can see somebody's epidermis. And it also co-stimulates angiogenesis, so you get new blood vessels growing in the area, and you get uh, um, epidermal stimulation. And then finally, uh, in some cases where there are leukocytes present as well, uh, and endothelial cells, you'll get stimulation and, and attraction again of osteoblasts. And that uh, area is very important to uh, orthopedic surgeons and dentists. So what are the advantages? Why am I so excited about platelet-rich plasma? It's a tissue regenerator and rejuvenator because, like I've just explained to you, you get new collagenesis, new vascularization, your new extracellular matrix formation, and bone mineralization. So if you're working on bone, you get bone mineralization as well. It is used by plastic surgeons and surgeons as a biological glue. So you can use the plasma as a natural glue as a, as a, uh, when you're doing flaps and you're doing facelifts. So there are some surgeons who utilize instead of many sutures. They use it as a tissue adhesive. So you spray it on, stick the tissue together, and it sort of acts as a glue. It helps to reduce post-operative swelling and pain. It could be uh, beta endorphins uh, mediated. And it's very safe because it's autologous. You're using the patient's own body. You're not using something from somebody else. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> and it's physiological. So it's non-allergenic. It's the body's own uh, versus synthetic or products from animal origin. And it's free from concerns over transmissible uh, diseases to the patient. So you're not uh, transmitting something from somebody else to the patient. And it enhances wound healing. Uh, Professor Marx from the States, uh, I think he's probably... Uh, one of the world authorities um, on platelet rich plasma in dentistry and maxillofacial surgery has demonstrated that uh, wound healing can be enhanced by up to 40%. <clears throat> it's a physiological sort of antibiotic because if you look at plasma, it will contain antibodies, it will contain some white cells, it will also have all the hormone profile, your nutrients in it. So it is, it is a bioactive product that you're injecting the patient and not just a, a synthetic product. It's used in tissue engineering in vitro. Um, it's used as autologous tissue culture medium instead of other um, culture media. And uh, again, if you are going to be growing uh, the patient's own myoblasts or chondrocytes or whatever cells in the body, if you can use his own plasma and grow his cells in the lab on it, it remains autologous. You're not adding uh, um, 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 foreign material to it. So it, it remains an autologous um, process. And it's ease of use. If you're familiar with injecting um, lips or skin with fillers or any other products, um, it's the same technique. There's not uh, a big difference there. It's very convenient. Um, it's, there are many uh, uh, um, methods or techniques where you can actually do it right in your room so you don't have to take blood, send it off to the lab, and then it has to be returned to you. So you can do it on the spot in the office. And it's very cost effective compared to the cost of fillers and other products, which can be very expensive, you can yield five to 10 mils compared to one mil of a filler. Um, <clears throat> the fields of application is numerous. It's in research and development, cell separation, cell culturing, tissue engineering. Like I said, the dentists have been uh, using it, especially in the United States since the 90s under the leadership of Professor Marks. In dermatology, it can be used for reconstruction and transplantation, for ulcer healing, chronic wound healing, uh, reimplantation of autologous cells. So you culture the patients on fibroblasts or whatever, like I've just mentioned, in his own plasma, and then you transport it back to the patient. You can inject it. In surgery, the cardiovascular surgeons use it in, in cardiac surgery uh, to prevent leakage uh, in combination with sutures. In abdominal surgery, especially maxillofacial surgery, orthopedic surgery, plastic surgery.